We made different size pads for different projects. And these are the three projects that we're gonna work on now. Now, just for um, conversation, this is a piece that hasn't gone through our proprietary restoration process. So this would be something as if you had purchased this at a thrift store or something, uh, or you're a restorer, uh, finishes a little old, tired, it's got some stains throughout. It's got the wear along the edges, back has discoloration. It's got buildup from being handled and used. So what I'm going to do is just use the Lubricite 77 on this without a cleaning, without a polishing. I will feather sand the corners and I'm gonna show you how I apply color with the Lubricite 77 with the pad and dry powders. I have a little 220 and I just wanna smooth off the rough edges. Because if it's not, it's all jagged and the stain and the color doesn't go on right. When you put color on, you're putting color and finish. So I'm just doing this just for kind of a little test. And I'll, I'll do the style. Being, I'm sure you guys know furniture, but below the seat called the leg, above the seat is called the style. I'll kind of through here, and I'll just do a little bit on the front leg. So I didn't even clean this. I mean, I'm just going to dust it off, but it's dirty. You can see I'm, but I'll show you how the lubricite works. I'm going to charge it again. Not going to charge it as much as I did the top because it's a different job. That's about as much as I'm going to want. And the way I made this pad is it's behind my finger. So I'm going to really use the touch of my finger. It's thin. The back of the heel has that whole pad, but I'm not doing a top. So I'm putting it on a little more liberally, kind of the way shellac is put on when you do that French polish. A thicker coat of shellac, like a two pound cut, two or three pound cut, but this is still super thin. It's not as thick, but see how it automatically starts to revive the finish settles it and this is reviving and reconditioning an original surface so it's interesting we read some literature and you know the comparable product and it talks about compatible with any wood surface so people get confused they hear wood surface they think of wood no it's the wood surface and the surface is going to have a different coating so it's compatible with shellac lacquer varnish polyurethane oil finishes So that would be a first coat and then I would continue to build this up all the way around, but I'll show you how I'm going to do some touch up. And here we have mineral powders. You can always get a color blocks on Kingdom Restorations. Mm -hmm. My brother Floyd puts them together and they're put together very specifically between anilines and mineral powders. Anilines are transparent and clear and then your total pigment colors are more, you know, for painting and blending. But Something like this, I would just use a little bit of mineral orange, and it's actually getting very difficult to even find these colors today. So I just put a little bit of perfect brown, which is an aniline, and a little bit of orange. And then I mix my color on the brown paper. And that's orange. And I might want to just put a touch of black on there. So I'll add a little bit of black, just a little bit. Gets it more into that Tudor color. So I didn't have a really heavy concentration because I wanted to see how I was with color. So I'm going to do a little bit of the perfect brown because here's a piece of glass. And if I were to sample, here's a technique. You could just put your Lubricite 77 on your brown paper. And then here's your perfect brown on glass. And it's transparent. If I want to take the tonal, obviously here it's orange. You could see it's more painted. 
So all these, you know, my perfect brown, here's my Bismarck brown, which is clear. It's more of a red red background, that Cordovan mahogany. Here's the Bismarck brown, a little heavier. There it is, that burgundy. It's a real deep burgundy. But if I put that on wood and I put a thin film on that, you'll still see the wood. And it creates a tinting and a shading technique. So I'm a little bit of black and I might even add a little bit of raw umber. And raw umber is tonal, because I need coverage. I prefer using a pad over a brush because you can just dab it in those little gouges and then pad off the excess. And again, it builds up against each other. So different directions, soft, real soft. Once you get the color, then you put the clear coat over it. That color comes right in place. Now there's a couple little gouges there. I'm just gonna kind of squish it in and get it inside. And then I can kind of wipe it off. But now I'd have to use a brush. Then we could here and kind of just dab it. And then everything going forward is gonna be clear. Any deep gouges that I don't get with the pad, because the pad is fast, I get with a brush. But that's how to put color on with a pad with the Lubricite 77 and the mineral powders. So this is a gun that I actually did. The uh, client dropped it accidentally, chipped out a large piece of walnut. He had one which we glued in and then we used an epoxy filler. So we actually Frenched over it, blended our color with a pad, and now it just needs a little bit of graining put in and then another top coating of the Lubricite 77. So I'll show you how that works. And again, a small pad for your working surface. I've got a little pad that's actually a little too big and I made this one because this might be a little bit better because I don't want to go beyond really the repair area. I want to blend it. I don't want to necessarily have to do the whole piece. And again, dealing with the smallest pad. And I started to charge it and I really felt it important to show you how much lubricite should be applied to this for the corresponding area to be worked on. Just a little bit. Tiny little bit. And I'm only going to be working. This area has been touched up. It's been... A base color has been applied. And you want to know something? Right now, it's a little too much. You can see how heavy that went on. I want to put a little bit of oil. And I want to remove a little bit from the pad. Because I don't want a real heavy buildup. I just want to be able to see my natural color so I can put some grain lines in. And then we use the epoxy filler. I want to be able to get a little bit of touch up on that back. Okay, so that's enough just to put the base. And I was asked about different techniques to mix mixing dry powders. As I showed you, some fellas use the brown paper and they just squirt it on and they mix their color and they apply. And I gotta clean my brush. And I'm gonna take a small pin brush on this one. A technique my father taught me was after we use the sandpaper on the job is to use a, a piece of used sandpaper as your palette and totally unique I, that's what I grew up with and you would just kind of fold it in just like that here's a little point you fold it and then you fold this over so it makes a nice little cup you hold it in your hand like this squirt a little lubricite and you can mix the color, you can hold it in your hand as you're working, you kind of move around, and you're being resourceful and using what you would normally throw away as a useful palette. But I've gotten away from this, and now I, I'm fancy and I use a, a square or a round palette. But let me go back to old school. So I just need to put a very, very light grain lines, and I'm going to go with my perfect brown. I don't need a lot of color, but I need some color. I want to touch of tonality, and I'm going to use a little bit of this burnt umber. Now I like to sit down, so it's kind of hard. So you got to get the right angle. So it's.
super gentle work. A fusing of color. Thin, thin lines. Try to match the grain pattern. Sometimes you do a little pixelation. And touch up is the art of camouflage. It's kind of blending it in. Somewhat in painting. You don't want to be too broad with your strokes. Now after I do this, so here's my gray line here. Sometimes I'd rather be a little bit lighter than too dark. It starts to disappear before your eyes. the lubricite again it kind of fuses these lines in here's my color 